everyone i found an open page in my um sketchbook and before i do my visual journal page where i show that i understand what contrast is and contrast is a principle of design i really suggest that you kind of organize your colors into um different piles um so um when you're thinking about contrast um, you really should think, you know, like black versus white, right? So those are kind of, those are opposite colors. So black versus white would be contrast. Actually, this, the Sharpie black is more opposite. So before you start to work, kind of think about your color wheel and think about opposites um, because opposites create the most kind of contrast right? The strongest hard boundary. So like, what is the opposite of red? Let's review. It would be kind of like green or like blue. Maybe this is more of an opposite, right? What is the opposite of blue, right? Opposite of blue right across would be kind of orange. And what is the opposite uh, let's see, what are some other colors I have here? What is the opposite of purple? Purple, the opposite of purple would be kind of a yellow color, right? Purple, sorry, yellow. So like these are kind of opposites and it's kind of like you're organizing your complements. Maybe you want to have a different value of the red, you know, to kind of space it out. It's kind of like a red orange, but they're still, you know, opposites. Maybe this would be more here. And, you know, maybe you want to grab two shades of each color, you know, as you're thinking of opposites. So orange versus blue, red, thinking about complementary colors and contrast. And then we got red and greens. And you got your purples, right? And then your yellows, right? So that, notice how I have two shades of each. Right, and I'm kind of organized, and black and white are actually opposite. So they create total contrast, they're opposites, right, because um, they are opposite each other um, on the color wheel, okay? So when you're doing your um, visual journal page, now let's make some more space. Um, you wanna go ahead and you wanna have these um, to the side, you know, kind of organized. You know, I'm going to kind of put them up to the side, like at the top. You can see my piles are kind of, you know, separate. Moving this over. Moving this over. Moving this. All right, and then I'm going to bring my sketchbook. Right? So contrast, like, another word for the name for the word contrast is difference. Right? So diff difference right so one way to think about contrast is of course in color right so we have all of these different pairs so you can make different boxes so I have white and black and then I have the three other pairs And again, this is kind of like visual notes and a strong difference in value, strong difference in chroma, warm versus cool. Okay. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and make some notes. I'm going to color the background of this little area right here, kind of a gray. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the white to come out. So I'm going to kind of give it a background because I want us to understand that that is white that we're creating. So these are kind of visual notes in your sketchbook on contrast. You can make them smaller if you want. Small is fine. That way, by coloring the background, 
That way I'm seeing white, right? Right, so I can go ahead and I can emphasize that. Okay, so obviously white and black create contrast. Now I don't need to color this too much. And let me know if you guys have a color pencil. But black would be an opposite. So I can just go ahead and shade that in. So black versus white is an opposite. You have a really strong boundary there. That would be contrast, black to white, right? So that's an example of contrast, all right? Another example would be the complements of red and green, right? So if I go ahead, if I shade this real dark, I, I got green. Maybe I want to add like another value in there of green to just kind of play around and blend. Right, but you have mostly green on one side. Well, the opposite, what's going to create the strongest color contrast is red. Right, so red versus green. That will create, wow, what a difference between those two. Red versus green. So that's another example of contrast. Okay, here we go. Let's keep going. Okay, we got blue. And the opposite of blue. Opposite of blue is orange, right? So that too is contrast. So we already talked about color. This is a really nice, like we're touching back on color. But that, the blue really, really pops out. I'm blading, blending different values of blue on top because it's next to the orange and I'm creating color contrast. When you do your graffiti art, you're gonna wanna think about, well, how am I gonna create contrast and how is my eye gonna go ahead and go right there? Okay, so the opposite, if I have a lot of yellow. Okay, what is the opposite of yellow? The opposite of yellow would be purple. And this is kind of a really cool, like, red violet happening here. I love this color. Maybe I want to blend some more of this in. You can go ahead and play with your markers. Look, that just broke. No fret. You can kind of blend that on there. Still use it. And go ahead and create cool different color contrasts. And it looks like I have two more spaces. Huh. I didn't even think about that. So, you know, you could play with your colors for the two freebies and think, okay, well, what, where are their opposites? Okay, so I have a really dark green, right? So maybe a direct opposite of this would be this really dark red. So you could kind of like pick other ones. So this is red and green, but it has more value. But maybe to create even more contrast, I could use this dark red, but another way to think about contrast is value. Right? So these are kind of like at a similar value. They both have a lot of black. So instead of contrasting it with a red that has the same amount, I can go ahead and I can find a really, really, really light red. And a light red, an example of light red would be pink. And because pink is red with white, and because it has less value, there is, there's even more of a difference. So for your last two, I want you to pick like colors in your markers that you feel like have a lot of contrast. Notice the difference, like that's even more of a difference like this because there's a difference in value, right? So let's say, I really love this one color right here, right? This like beautiful kind of aqua blue, that would be kind of a red orange. The natural contrast to that would be kind of like a red orange color. But instead, where is that dark red that I just had? Instead of doing a red orange, I could pick like a dark, a darker, a, a orange that's at a darker value, which is kind of like this red. I'm seeing if I have an orange that's at a darker value. I don't know if I have one. Maybe I can blend these together and kind of make a really dark orange. So that creates more contrast because it's kind of at a darker value. So this right here, this kind of contrast, we would call color contrast. 
color contrast. And that's kind of the easiest way to think about contrast. Well, another way to think about contrast is when you have dissimilar elements. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put all of this together because contrast equals difference, right? And I want my viewer to understand that those are the same things. When I say contrast, I mean difference. Maybe I'll go ahead and I'll outline that in my marker because I want those words to be together. So the word contrast means difference striking difference and um, let's do some more but look I can go ahead I can make my visual journal page cool so continuing contrast I have a guest here Jason Gomez say hi Jason he made an appearance hey. he made an appearance Jason what does the word contrast mean what does it mean uh, when something is the opposite from the other from, some, from something else. Right, so like we got like opposites happening with color, but how can we draw a contrast like at the bottom of this page, right? So what are some opposites that we can think of? Opposite things. Do you have any ideas, Jason? Uh, like fire and water. Ooh, fire and water, that's a good one. So let's let's create like, I'm gonna create three different ones. Because I, I was going to just do one, but Jason's here. And he's going to give me different ideas. So I'm still going with my contrast notes. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Okay, organizing my page into three different ways. And poor Jason, he can't see what's happening. He's like, there at the side. We're here for parent conferences. And we're just hanging out and drawing. So one thing I was thinking is like, I was thinking like I could do a frowny face. And I could just draw a bunch of emojis you know, that are all the same. They're all conformists. Ha ha ha. Right? And, and you feel different. Like, Jason, have you ever felt different? Like you're different from everyone? Uh, yeah. How does it feel? I mean, it could be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing. Yes, it could be good, but it could be bad. What if everyone around you was happy? Right? And all, everyone is like, what What would a color be that represents happiness? Like a good color to represent happiness. Like warm colors or cool colors? Like what, what would be happy? Warm or cool? Jason's like, ugh. Why? Uh, after school. Warm. Okay, so warm colors equal happiness. So then yeah. maybe like my sad face in the middle, he's gonna be all sad. He's gonna be by himself. So contrast, sometimes you wanna like think, okay, well, what is a cool color? So everyone, I'm just gonna show my work to Jason. Jason, it's so like here, you could see. Okay, I got all my, see? Yeah. Okay. okay, sometimes we all feel this way, right? So you could go ahead and take the end of one of your markers. Oh, look, the Sharpie's dead. Okay, so all of these, there's nothing worse than a marker that's kind of dying. Okay, so like I got a smooth edge on this. So everyone's gonna be the same, but in order to create contrast, I gotta make all these smiley faces the same. I'm doing like overlapping little bumps. Dun, 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 dun. Jason's, Jason's gonna, I wonder if Jason will watch the video that he's in. Watch the videos, do your shape notes. Oh, look, we got someone. Someone's here. Okay, so in order to show that um, the smiley faces get different, like this one smiley face is different, feels like it's not enough to have a, um, just one frown, right? So we use that secret weapon, which is color. So you have to ask yourself, I'm sorry, I'm just finishing these faces. This is rhythm, by the way. Repetition, 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 repetition. So um, we said that a way, like if we wanna do sad, maybe we would do cool. No, sad doesn't have to be cool. But you go ahead and you think about opposite kind of colors, right? 
So I can go ahead, do my smiley face dark to light, and please use your markers for this if you want. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna create different boxes showing a difference, right? So this guy's get obviously like kind of like sad. Maybe I wanna add like some darker value around to go ahead and give shadows. Maybe I wanna blue that. Okay, maybe I wanna go kind of light. You know, maybe I wanna give him a highlight. Okay, so that's my guy. That's my difference. How do I make him different, right? How do I create contrast? Well, everything else can be kind of like in warm colors. My dominant color being more of an orange color, right? So I could go ahead and make my guy, all my other happy faces, kind of like yellow and orange, right? So orange, oh my gosh, you're so happy and yellow. Um, orange, and then yellow. Orange, you know, and I could do all sorts of warm colors and I can shake it up. Dark to light, notice how I'm still changing the direction of my pencil. And then I really wanna emphasize this, so why does this create contrast? Well, our eye kind of goes, and this gets into our next principle, emphasis. Where does our eye go right now? Now, our eye goes to the thing that's different. Like when this guy walks into a room, we're gonna look at him because he's different, because there's a contrast. So again, the word contrast means different. So another way to create contrast, like number one is color, right? But number two is like, if there's a different, like everything is similar and there is one different thing, right? I'm getting a little tired. I'm gonna do all warm colors. I'm kind of rushing through this now. And then I'm gonna orange it at the sides, do some blending. Okay, and this is a way to show that you understand contrast. Okay, maybe I wanna add some red shadow on the left to go ahead and create contrast. And you can do whatever you want. Maybe you don't do smiley faces. Okay, but my eye is gonna go straight here. Maybe I wanna add in a little bit of purple as a shadow on the side to make him different, to make him pop out a little bit more because that yellow, but you got like mostly cool and then you got you got some warm happening. Mostly cool and then some warm. Okay, so that's contrast. Okay, um, and then when I was with Jason, he was saying that like dissimilar element, elements, things that are different. So one thing he brought up was fire, right? So maybe I have like one candle. It's kind of bright, right? And then around it, you know, and then let's see, let's turn this into a candle. Ellipsy, dark to light, dark to light, dark to light. So I got this candle, right? And around it, maybe I wanna go ahead and I ha wanna have like a bunch of cool colors, right? So on the outside, right? I'm gonna make it a really dark value, right? And this is kind of like really darkening the edge creates sort of a hard boundary. And then the opposite, the opposite of dark blue would be kind of like a light orange because I'm kind of like lighter in the value. So contrast, right? So around we have a bunch of water. So Jason said surround it with water, like ocean water. So how do I draw water? Well, if you have a white color pencil, I'd be interested. You could go ahead and add some white on top of that, right? And you know, for the candlestick, maybe I wanna make that purple. Purple is all a cool color. And it's like you really wanna do these exercises before we get into like the nitty gritty of the graffiti project next week. Right, so we got the purple happening. Dark to light. 
We got orange. Okay, so obviously the fire, you know, is a blend of different things. Maybe I want to add a little bit of red, but yellow is kind of my dominant, right? But because everything is surrounded, if I surround it with something that's totally different, all cool colors, it's going to pop out. All right, contrast. Right, and maybe, because this yellow, yellow is a color at the lightest value. Maybe I want to darken the value by adding more layers. Maybe I'm adding more movement around here because I have this flowing movement going. Notice how hard I'm pressing down. Maybe I want to blend in some white, right? It's mostly dark, but blending in some white. So that would be a uh, contrast, right? And what what is different? the flame, right? Because everything around is cool. It's kind of like darker. So it's it's not similar. The face sticks out, not similar. So contrast is, again, the word contrast means difference. So the first one we went over was color contrast, right? So there's color contrast, right? Where you have complementary colors, different colors. And then you have like a one dis dissimilar object, one different object, something that doesn't go. So it's like, well, what doesn't belong here? Well, this candle, that's contrast, right? And we're using color, right? What doesn't belong here? The sad guy, but we're using color to our advantage, color and value to support it. Okay, again, a lot of value, dark value, no value, total value, no value. Okay, so another way, and I'm gonna go ahead, I didn't give myself a strong hard boundary, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add that in, but don't put Sharpie or your markers on top of like color pencil or pastel, because it will ruin it. Okay. One uh, painting that's in our notes that's kind of fun, it's called Daniel and the Lion Den, right? And what it is, is there is this guy, and I wish, I kind of want to bring him up, but I'm in a hurry, and he's sitting down, and he's like all scared, right? And he's like crying, right? And he's so scared, and he's so sad, and he's actually kind of like naked. We're not going to draw him naked here. But he's kind of sitting and he's afraid and his legs are kind of in, right? And he's all alone, right? And there's kind of like this spotlight coming down on him, right? And he is by himself. He's isolated, which we're going to get more into in a second. But around him, right, there's so much contrast because there are all of these mean uh, lions, Right? All around them. This is called Daniel and the Lion's Den. And I guess this looks like a mean cat. Right? But we can make him look more like a person. But everyone around him is kind of like... He's like surrounded by all these cats and they're going to eat him. Right? He's not the same. Right? He's kind of like stuck in cat land. Right? And all these are lions, whatever. I guess I don't know how to draw a lion off the top of my head. I only know how to draw a cat. So you can see he's sad, he's scared, and he's surrounded by cats, right? Got a regular rhythm of cats going on, all these angry cats, okay? And then, you know, we don't need to get into like the details of all the cats, but just pretend all of these are cats. And he's surrounded by cats, right? And he is so different and he's isolated. There's like light coming in, okay? He's in light value. Right, and he's kind of crying. You know, maybe I want to get my pen. I'm looking for a pen. Do I have a pen? Make sure you still have your pens because they come in handy, the pens I gave you. Because pens create contrast, right? So we can go ahead and make Daniel. Maybe I'm going to give him more eyes and a nose. And he's so sad and he's kind of crying. Give him some ellipses. You know, here he is. Add some curvy lines, some hatching. So here's Daniel, he's so sad, 
right? And he's holding his hands and he's just so scared, right? And here he is and there are all these lions. Well, he's kind of like the lions are all warm, right? They're all kind of like warm colors, right? And then it's kind of like red around him because it's kind of like the end of his life. So, you know, you can draw whatever you want for these notes, right? And then in the middle, it's really, really white, right? It's really white and it's kind of lonely, you know, in the middle. So maybe to create contrast, I'll go ahead. I'll have a hard boundary between the red, between the red and the, um, the outside, right? And then it's kind of like white, in the middle. This is at a very light value. In order to create more contrast, I could go ahead, add a layer where all the lions are kind of in, you know, more dark value, right? And maybe we see the lions kind of come through there. But the point is, you know, I'm talking about color and value, but he is not the same. Everyone around him is like a scary lion and he is totally different. He is on his own. Right, and maybe we'll do like really light purple, right? But it's a really light value, so that's different. So that's another example of contrast. So in this video, we went over like different ways to create contrast. You can have something that is not the same in a sea of like lions or happy faces, right? And to keep in mind this whole idea of value, right? Value creates contrast. If it's like 10, value 10 versus value zero, right? Or complementary colors, right? That creates contrast. Notice right here, we have a really light pink and really dark green. So we have like difference in value and their complementary colors, right? This is a really light, light green and a dark red. So that creates all the contrast. Complementary colors, complementary colors. Okay, so by doing this page, you'll go ahead and you will remember contrast as you're moving on and you're planning your graffiti art project.